Hello there and welcome friends. This video is going to be all about hexes, very special class abilities from basically shaman and also witch that can highly increase your chances of success during battle, both when it comes to helping you hit the enemy and even turning hits into critical hits and also avoiding enemy attacks, turning enemy critical hits into normal hits or even hits into outright misses. Now the reason I'm making this video all about hexes is that I often get a lot of people asking me how come my characters are buffed with hexes that have such high duration instead of their normal rounds duration only? So let's get started. First, let's begin by talking about the main and most powerful hexes in the game. Protective Luck and also Fortune Hex. Now the way they work is simple and in some ways similar. Protective Luck will ward any character of your choice, besides the witch or shaman herself, so that whenever the enemy targets them with any effect that requires an attack roll, they have to roll twice and take the worst result. Of course, this is a very useful effect. After all, if your character already has high armor class, my wolf here with 76, this will highly reduce the chances of the enemy hitting you. Especially when it comes to the very annoying 20 rolls, which are basically automatic hits regardless of your armor class. With this ability, even if the enemy manages to roll a 20, they will have to roll again, and then take the worst result. Only if their second hit is also a 20, which is a very, very low chance, will their attack automatically hit you. Never mind for examples such as when they manage to get a critical hit, but have to roll again, and the critical hit fumbles becoming just a normal hit, as they fail their threat roll. Besides that, for cases where the enemy attack bonus is somewhat close to your armor class, so you can shift the rolls further in your favor and easily avoid attacks. Now do remember that this is actually for every single one of your enemy's attacks, so so long as the effect still has a duration left, every single one of your enemy's attack will have to roll twice. Now the second extremely powerful hex is Fortune Hex. You can cast this on any character including the witch or shaman herself, unlike Protective Luck. And basically whenever they make any ability check, attack roll, saving throw or skill check even, they will roll twice and take the better result. The best part about this is that it doesn't just really help when it comes to hitting the enemy, but also when it comes to generating critical hits, especially for high critical range weapons, such as scimitars in the case of my trickster here, who eventually can get 11 to 20 or 15 to 20 for normal characters. After all, by rolling twice, we highly increase our chances that the number will fall in our weapon's critical range, thus allowing for a critical hit. And it doesn't just end there, really, because even if the enemy has an extreme amount of armor class, such as Playful Darkness in the screenshot here, by rolling twice, we also increase our chances of getting a natural 20 which is an automatic hit that will hit the enemy no matter how high their armor class is. So overall very powerful as well, just as with protective luck. Now the only limit to fortune hex is that, well, even though it has infinite uses, just as with protective luck, you can only cast it once per character, per rest. It so work. for example, is I it can't cast it here on my main character, as he already has the effect on. So now we will have to wait until rest, to be able to cast it again. Now this isn't really an issue, the same with the fact that by default both of these hexes have very low duration, because of a very simple interaction with another hex as I'm about to show you. Alright, so you might have noticed my character here actually has the absurd sum really of more than 5 minutes of fortune hex. How do we actually get to that point though? It's very simple really. First, you will of course want to cast both Protective Luck and also Fortune Hex on your character. So now we have both of them, which lasts around 80 seconds as Camellia is level 16 already. And the duration starts at 6 seconds, so 1 round, then increases to 12 seconds at level 8 and 18 seconds at level 16. After that, if you want to extend their duration indefinitely, all you have to do is basically spam either Chant, in the case of Shaman, this war must end. Or Kekko in the case of which. Let's see how it goes. So one casting of chant here. And there we go. We already went from 15 seconds to 20 seconds. And we can simply repeat this again and again. Out of battle to keep increasing the duration of our main hexes, fortune, hex and protective luck. So now we have 27 seconds instead of just 15. And as I said, this will go on and on. So really all you have to do is keep expanding it 
until you run out of patience basically. Now theoretically you could increase this basically to whatever amount you want, especially 10 minutes and plus to the point where it can last you for the whole dungeon, but I don't find it that needed really. I would personally save this for tough encounters and boss battles, but of course if you have the patience you can just keep extending it again and again. Now an amusing part about fortune hex and also protective luck is that as you can see from this screenshot here, they will actually stack so long as they are cast by characters of different classes, such as Amber who is a witch and Camellia a spirit hunter. This way you will get to roll 3 whole times and pick the best result all of these 3 whenever making any attack and enemies will also have to roll 3 times whenever attempting to hit you and pick the worst result. Talk about being overpowered, right? Now personally, I think this is probably an oversight on the developer's part, so it might change on future patches and such, but I could of course be wrong and this is intended. After all, Protective Look for example has a different icon based on the Shaman version and then the Witch version. But as it stands, even just a single casting of Protective Look and also Fortune Hex, when extended with either Kako or Chant, it's certainly enough to highly increase your chances of either defeating the foe through attack rolls, increasing your critical hit chance, and of course reducing your chances of being hit. Also, it is very important to note that hexes are not spell effects, meaning the enemies cannot dispel hexes from you, which is perfect for boss casters, or even the infamous battle with a certain demon lord that automatically dispels all your buffs before battle even starts. After all, he won't be able to do anything against your fortune and protective luck hexes, highly increasing your chances of beating him. Now, because this is a video about hexes, I might as well talk about the other good ones too. You probably already know Evil Eye from my Camellia and Ember build videos. Evil Eye is a crazy powerful hex. At early levels, it's going to inflict the enemy with a minus 2 penalty to basically either armor class, attack rolls, or also saving throws. Armor class and saving throws certainly being the best options. Now as soon as level 8 this penalty will actually double to a minus 4 which is very big. And the best part is a saving throw will only reduce it to a single round, so the enemy will still be hit with the full effect, the only difference being the lower duration. However, just like you can extend fortune and protective luck with Kekko or Chant, you can also do this for Evil Eye. The difference is that in this case because this will be cast at your enemy, you have to do it during battle. But even then, both Chant and Kekko only cost a move action, so you can just cast them once, use a move action to extend the duration forever, and keep attacking or casting spells with your normal standard action. Now the other hexes, at least the offensive ones, are a bit more situational. If you've used Ember during the early game, then you know she starts with the slumber hex, which can actually be quite useful. It will attempt to put an enemy to sleep, but it does have a will saving throw and if the enemy succeeds they won't be affected by it and also cannot be affected by the hex again for one full day. So basically it's once per enemy. It's certainly very useful during the early game where enemies tend to have low will saving throws and also has a very interesting synergy with the coup de grace ability that all your characters start out with. Sleeping enemies will wake up whenever they take any damage, however, they are also prime targets for coup de grace, which will attempt to either hit them for a massive amount of damage with a critical hit, or outright instantly kill them if they fail a fortitude saving throw, so be sure to hit sleeping enemies early on with the coup de grace ability, as to maximize this hex's potential. Besides that, we also have vulnerability curse, another hex that Ember starts out with. It's a bit misleading because it says it makes enemies vulnerable to energy, which means they should take 50% more damage. However, in reality, what this hex does is remove any damage resistance or immunity the enemy might have to energy damage. For example, Brimorak demons are immune to fire, or most of the demons are resistant to fire damage. By having Ember cast this on an enemy, they will lose that damage resistance or immunity, thus allowing you to hit them for full damage whenever using, for example, fire spells, such as Hellfire Ray or the Fire Kineticist Blast as I have shown you in my Kinetasis class guide. Just like Evil Eye, a saving throw will reduce this to just a single round, so it can still be very useful after all, no matter how high the enemy saving throws are, they will at the very least be affected by this hex for a single round. Now, in the case of Camellia, we actually have further ways of reducing enemy armor class with hexes, such as with Hampering Hex, this is a special hex that can only be gained by having the Battle Spirit, and this is actually the spirit choice that Camellia starts out with. 
It basically inflicts a minus 2 penalty to enemy armor class that will increase to minus 4 at level 8. The same as Evil Eye, and just like Evil Eye, even if the enemy passes the saving throw, they will still be hit by the effect for one round, which is more than enough to properly defeat most of the enemies really, even on unfair, when you are properly prepared. Now the only sad thing about this hack is, is that you can't extend the one round level duration on a successful save to chant, but even then it can still be useful. Now Kamena can also gain access to the very powerful Metal Curse hacks, which is probably the hacks with the strongest armor class debuff that we have so far in the game. Now you can only get this by having the Earth Spirit, so basically you will have to get Camellia second spirit and then Earth as a mythic ability, and then getting this hacks at level up. With it, you will debuff the enemy with a minus 2 penalty to armor class that increases to minus 4 at level 8, and then a massive minus 6 at level 16. The best part is that it does not have a save at all, and will always last for 1 to 3 rounds, so certainly a good enough duration to properly debuff and defeat any enemy in the game. This actually makes Camellia way better than Ember when it comes to debuffing the enemy's armor class, so if you actually wanted to debuff your enemy's armor class to the max, just with Camellia you could get a minus 4 from Evil Eye, another minus 4 from Hampering Hex, and then a crazy powerful minus 6 from Metal Curse, for an absurd minus 14 to enemy armor class. Talk about crazy, right? And speaking about Camellia, because she is a battle shaman, she also has access to another of the best hexes in the game, Battle Master. By default and until level 8, this will only give you an extra attack of opportunity, which even stacks with combat reflexes feat. Now the best part about this hex is that it actually has 3 effects, and the second one comes at level 8, which gives you weapon specialization in any weapon of your choice, and then at level 16, the greater weapon focus feat in the same weapon, so overall very powerful, after all, it's basically 2 extra feats. And both of them are actually fighter specific feats that a shaman would not be able to get otherwise. Now another decent hex, in this case for characters that want to tank, is Ice Plant, as it can give you a plus 2 natural armor bonus to armor class. What's special about this is that this is a stacking bonus, so just like your alchemist mutagen, it will stack with bark skin or amulets of natural armor. And also your scald rage, another stacking natural armor class bonus. You can actually increase the Ice Plant bonus by buying a ring that you can get as soon as Chapter 1 from the Tavern Merchant. Now besides that, for another useful hex, we also have Beast's Gift. And this is Switch only, so only Ember can get it. Camellia actually loses out on, th on this one for once. Even though it does have a duration of minutes equal to your Witch level, this hex has infinite uses, so whenever the duration wears off, all you have to do is cast it again. And with this, you can give any one of your characters an extra bite attack, the best part about bite attacks is that they will stack with one another. This doesn't mean that you can actually cast this hex multiple times for multiple bites, at least not on the same character, but a scald that can give your party another bite attack from Animal Fury Rage Power, for example, will also work together with the Beast Gift Bite for two extra bites for all of your party members. And this is especially great for characters that are already focused on bites, such as the wolf or dog pets, which are pretty much the strongest pets in the game. After all, their extra bite attacks will already hit for a massive amount of damage, something like 40 to 50, and will further increase their numbers of attacks per round, never mind the fact they also get a free trip attempt on a bite for easily knocking down your enemies. Now as far as which, the other hexes aren't really that useful. Life Giver is basically the strongest and most useful of the grand hexes that you only get at level 18 to 20 as it's basically a free resurrection, so you can once per day fully revive any of your characters, without even spending a material component, which is two diamonds for the normal resurrection spell, and can be quite expensive. With this, we just get it for free. Besides that, I imagine you can also benefit from the regenerative Sunu hex, that can, at the very least, regenerate hit points to one of your characters, but most importantly, heal up to 4 points of ability score damage from two ability scores, and this is also once per day and once per character. Now before finishing this video, let's talk about what I consider to be a good hex progression for your Ember and also Camellia. This is going to differ based on the difficulty you are playing at. If you are playing on let's say hard and unfair, then I strongly suggest you get protective luck as early as possible. After all, this has infinite uses and you can cast it on the same character 
any number of times, even in the same rest cycle. And of course, it's going to highly help you avoid enemy hits, especially during the early game, where enemies have a lot of attack bonus and you don't really have that high armor class yet. So to increase the power of your protective luck, for your next hex, be sure to pick either Chant or Kako if you're using Ember or a Witch of your choice. This way we can highly increase not only the duration of our protective look, but also pre-buff basically all our characters that will be in melee range, so subject to getting hit from enemy attacks, to highly increase their survivability. Once again, very powerful, not only during the late mid, but especially the early game as well. After that, I strongly recommend you pick Fortune Hex. The reason is that, even though it's extremely powerful when it comes to increasing our chances of hitting the enemy or making saving throws, for example, and even tripping the enemy from ability and skill checks, Fortune Hex has a limit of once per character per rest, so you can't really spam it as much as Protective Luck, but of course, as I said before, you can just increase its duration to basically forever, depending on your patience. After getting these three hexes, so Protective Luck, Chant, and then Fortune, is when I would pick Evil Eye. Otherwise, if you are playing on Normal or Core, feel free to go with Evil Eye first. If you are using both Amber and Camellia in the same party, then you can split these hexes between them, but remember that, as far as this video at least, you can actually stack both Protective Luck and also Fortune Hex. Even Evil Eye will also stack with itself when cast by different hex classes. Now after you've picked these 4 main hexes, the choices are up to you. For Camellia, I would certainly go with Battle Master, for example, and also Ice Plant if you plan on tanking with her or just to increase her survivability. Meanwhile for Amber, be sure to go with Beast's Gift, and after that the choices are up to you. For me, Regenerative Sunu and then Life Giver. Well, so this was it for my hexes guide everyone, I hope I've managed to show you how very powerful and very useful hexes can be as a whole, especially protective luck and fortune hex of course. These hexes are even better when you are playing on hard and especially unfair, as ways to shift the rolls into your favor despite the bonuses the enemies get with a difficulty increase, such as higher attack bonus and also higher armor class. As usual, please support the channel by liking the video and subscribing if you can. If you think I missed a certain hacks, also be sure to comment down below. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends.